Now all this back to school talk. Okay, I, I'm officially not there yet. I'm one year off, but I know so many of my friends are going through it and how it can get tough to get kids back in the school routine. It's bad. It's hard to get moms back into the school routine. I've heard. <laughs> I was nudging my kids this right? morning trying to get them up. It is tough with the first day of school coming up. I want to invite one of my colleagues from Hillsborough County Public Schools, school psychologist Leah Armstrong, who's here. Thanks for being with us, Leah. And she's here to kind of give us all tips on how to help make that change from summer brain into school brain for the kids and get them up and running. Leah, thanks for being here. The first thing to really talk about is simply the idea of starting ASAP with shifting those schedules. Talk to me about that. Absolutely. We're all on summer and it's time to start slowly heading back to back to school. So I think part of that is getting that bedtime back to where it needs to be. A slow adjustment back to um, that school time bedtime so that that first day back is not as rough. That's the trick. You don't want that first Monday morning to be the first time anybody's no. gotten out of bed at 6.30 or 7.30. Absolutely. Gotcha. The, another thing that I, I think is important to talk about are these routines. And, and you put together like a, like a chart to help kind of get people clicking on that. Talk to me about that. Well, sometimes it helps if we have a little visual for the kids. The younger kids, you can have little pictures for older kids. It can be just the words about what they need to do. Even older kids from there, they can use their cell phones, but it's real important. And then it, it helps in foster um, independence in the, in the kids and also takes away that battle between parent and child. Did you check your list? What do you need to do? Did you walk the dog? Is your homework done? Is the lunch um, box? packed, all of that. So it, it takes some of that back and forth between parent and then the child can just go, oh, I did it. Oh, I did it. Yeah, and they get that satisfaction. Absolutely. I'm a to-do list person, so I got to say, I really like that. I would like my daughter to kind of start, you know, thinking in that. That's a great way to start kids doing. Another thing to kind of take away that anxiety we talked about is, is getting started early. Registering, don't wait till the first day of school, register right now. Which I didn't even know you could wait till the first day of school. And you say that some families choose to do that, but maybe not the smartest thing to do. Better to do it ahead of time so that the first day can be all about getting to class, getting breakfast, getting in and starting the day. Absolutely. And that includes also you, once you get signed up for school, you can go to the open house events. Those really you say those are actually more effective than maybe we know to cut the anxiety out. Absolutely. It lets the child meet the teacher, see old friends, meet new friends, get to see some of those other trusted adults at the school. Visit your school psychologist, your school counselor, school social worker, see where breakfast is see how I'm going to get home from class. Where do I need to go for older students? They get to walk their schedule. It's a great opportunity. Yeah, I mean, we all went to school for, you know, 13 years. It doesn't like click that these guys are brand new to this. And you know, and sometimes maybe you're at home and you're dealing with a student that perhaps didn't have the greatest school year last year, or maybe they're like really dreading, you know, not just, oh, I don't want to go back to school, but it's like a true dread. How can parents handle that? Yeah, a little bit of anxiety or nervousness is natural, but if it does go to that other level, I think it's important for parents to acknowledge what the child went through in the previous year while remaining positive and calm. Um, talk to the new teacher about what's going on so that they understand if you need to reach out to some of those student services personnel, tell your child the ways that they know how to cope and, and instill that, that they do have coping strategies, but open communication with the child and the teachers and the other staff at school is very important. No matter what the age, right? Yeah. No matter the age. I, I, and, and the final thing I want to point out, it's something I didn't even realize until I started with the school district, is how many people are at the school and able to help. And, and maybe encourage anybody out there who maybe they're going through something really difficult in their lives and they don't know where to turn, they can turn to the people at school. Absolutely. Trusted adults all over campus. So the school teacher, again, school psychologist, school counselor, school sco social worker, administrators, the principals and assistant principals, nurses, lots of people for you to get in contact with and to be able to build those relationships. That's what we're about, building those relationships with this kids. This has been great. It's so nice to meet you. You've got to come back and, and help parents too. I've got a year. I might need some counseling before <laughs> next year comes. Build you up. Build, build you me up. up. <laughs> they're, in good, they're in very good hands with folks like Leah. Oh, it is so nice to meet you. Thank right. you for doing this today. Good stuff. Well, I feel ready. You feel ready? I feel ready. Let's do this. Let's, Let's start school now. There we go. Just kidding. <laughs> August 12th in and Hillsborough. And then his work list. August 12th in Hillsborough. We'll be ready then. <laughs> well, until that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this segment. And of course, you can stay tuned because we've got plenty more fun on the other side of the break.